think about where you were 13 years ago. I know some of you are pretty young. 13 years might feel like a long time ago to you. I'm not that young, so it doesn't feel like that long ago to me personally. It was 2004, a Republican was in the White House. We were ramping up a war in the Middle East and the country was deeply divided. We well, things sure have changed. But in 2004, smartphones didn't even exist yet. Social media barely existed. The internet was mostly gotten through a dial-up connection and we watched that internet through a big heavy CRT monitor. But that's nothing compared to what happened in the early 1900s. This picture right here is from New York in 1900. There is one car in this picture. All the rest of the traffic is horse-drawn carriages. Here is New York in 1913, 13 years later. There is one horse in this picture. For hundreds, even thousands of years, the horse was humanity's go-to mode of transportation. And in 13 years, all that changed. Think about what a disruption this is. This isn't just about people going out and buying cars. Those horses had an entire infrastructure laid out underneath them in order to keep them in the city, places to feed them, places to house them, cleaning up after them. All of that went away. Cars were cleaner, they were easier to care for, they didn't overheat in the sun, they weren't living creatures with emotional needs, they didn't need to rest. You simply got better performance for less money and less effort. Anytime there's a technology that does that, that technology will win out. Millions in the horse trade didn't understand this. You know, they, they saw what they did as something that had been going on since the beginning of recorded history. It would be preposterous to think that their profession and their entire industry would just vanish like that. Right now, we're on the cusp of a technological disruption that's going to make switching from horses to cars look like switching from Coke to Pepsi. It's already happening a lot faster than you think. And believe it or not, you might be in the horse trade right now. So we talk a lot on this channel about the singularity, AI, exponential growth, and all that kind of stuff, and that's a lot of fun. But there's also a dark side to all this. One that we really need to understand because the way we respond to this is gonna significantly alter the future of our species. The BBC released a report just a few weeks ago that said that in the next 10 years, 30% of jobs are gonna go away because of automation. The industrial and information revolutions are littered with jobs that went away because they became outdated and unnecessary thanks to machines. And that was before machines could think. Even if a machine used robots, they needed somebody there to program the robots. Without the human, the machine was useless. But now those machines are starting to learn. You know, when we talk about AI, that's what we're really talking about, is machine learning. That's why it was such a big deal when the computer AlphaGo beat a world champion Go player, because unlike chess, where you could memorize a certain number of algorithms to win a game, with Go, it's a game that evolves over time, so the only way to play it is to teach yourself as you go. So instead of needing a person there to control all the robots in the factory, the robots will just teach themselves how to do it and probably better than the human could. In the US, we've heard a lot over the last campaign season about the proverbial coal miners, and our current president has campaigned specifically on bringing coal jobs back. Now look, I'm not being political when I say this, but those jobs are not coming back. I'm not saying that as a tree-hugging liberal. It has absolutely nothing to do with the environment or sustainable technologies or anything like that. It has everything to do with automation. Companies aren't not hiring because of their business struggles. They're not hiring because there's just no jobs to fill. And nothing's gonna bring those jobs back. There used to be a lot of horses in coal mines too. But coal is just one of hundreds of industries out there that are taking advantage of employees that can work 24 seven, never take a break, never make a mistake and work twice as fast. Oh, and you don't have to pay them. No insurance to worry about, no HR department to deal with personnel issues, no vacation time, no sick leave, no 401k, no pensions. Everything just gets a lot easier. And to a company that has an obligation to shareholders to maximize their profits, a human being just can't compare with that. This is not a trend that is going to just suddenly reverse itself. Coal is just the, well, canary in the coal mine. Or the coal mine in the canary if the canary was the world economy. The transportation sector, for example, makes up 25% of the jobs in the United States, if you can believe that. And autonomous cars, they're pretty much here, guys. And, you know, at this point, I just find it funny that people are even debating that autonomous cars are gonna actually be a thing. This is not some sci-fi futuristic concept that could happen sometime in the far future. This is happening right now. Actually, this has been happening for a really long time. 
GPS units first showed up in 1999 and it might have been a little weird at first, but eventually we all just got used to the idea that our car could tell us where to go. Object detection and collision avoidance systems became popular because of course nobody wants to run over their child while backing out of the driveway. Then fancy pants cars started being able to parallel park itself and we've signed on for that because we just can't ever quite get it right. Then lane assist started showing up, so now you won't run off the road if you doze off or lean over to grab your cell phone. Then Tesla hit us with autopilot, which is basically lane assist on steroids, and then Chevy hit us with super cruise, which is basically the same thing as autopilot. Volvo has driving assist, BMW has driving assistant plus, Subaru has eyesight. Almost all of the major car makers now have some form of semi-autonomous driving capabilities. And now, here we are. All those different safety components that have been in the works and tested and tweaked for decades now are starting to come together to form autonomous driving. This has been happening all this time, right under our noses. And now I feel pretty sure that the next car I get will be able to drive itself. Famously, the Tesla Model 3, which is going into production pretty much right now, is gonna be built with autonomous hardware capability. It's just a matter of the software catching up to it. But less famously, there's a lot of other car companies that are actually trying to beat Tesla to market with this. Nissan has a prototype self-driving car that fully charged drove and it was pretty freaking amazing what they were able to do. Cadillac, of all companies, is so bullish on self-driving technology that they actually spent millions of dollars creating a LiDAR map of the entire United States highway system just to form their own proprietary system. This way their cars won't just rely on sensors and GPS to find their way. The Cadillac cars will actually be able to drive through a 3D simulated environment that includes road signs and everything. Google's working on a car, Apple's supposedly working on a car, but the people who stand to benefit the most from this are the service providers. Uber made over $2 billion last year. Imagine what they could make if they didn't have to pay their drivers. Uber's been working for years on this idea of a transportation fleet of autonomous cars, and even Ford is starting to talk about getting into that game. People are predicting that cars are gonna transition from a retail industry to a service industry, with people like Peter, Peter Diamandis actually said that in 10 years, the idea of owning a car will be an outdated idea. Now, I don't go that far personally. Being originally from a small town, I don't see how that would work as well in a small town sector, so this seems like a very city-focused idea. But still the point being, the people who have the most to gain by self-driving technology are the ones that employ millions of drivers across the United States. This is a market-based shift. Shipping companies would have drivers that never have to sleep, never have to rest, never have to stop to take a piss, and would make fewer mistakes, leading to less spillage of their product. Shipping companies used to use horses a lot too. The fact is you can agree with the use of automation or not, you can sign on with it, you can disagree with it, but it's happening. And we need to be ready for it. I get asked all the time in the comments whether I think that AI and machines are gonna kill us all someday, and honestly, I'm not as worried about AI as I am about how we're going to react to AI. You know in the Jetsons and a lot of sci-fi movies from the past, their visions of the future always included, you know, machines doing everything for us so that we could live lives of creativity and leisure and not have to do any work. But the Jetsons never really delved into the nuances of the economic system that made that kind of life possible. So what happens when a third of your workforce is out of a job through no fault of their own? I think we're already starting to see the answer. A trend toward authoritarianism, demagoguery, isolationism, scapegoating. Automation is already taking more jobs than immigrants, but we're not building a wall around any machines, are we? Some people are talking about ideas like a basic minimum income, just a basic income that everybody makes just to keep everybody's heads above water. And that's an interesting concept that's being debated and even tried in a few places. Surprisingly, one of those places is Alaska, one of the reddest states. They actually give a rebate back to all of their citizens from their oil revenues. But nationwide, we can't even agree on a minimum wage so the people who are actually working full time can live comfortably. The United States is a very capitalistic, puritanical society where you're supposed to earn your keep and we frown on things like welfare and taking from other people and where people argue against things like universal health care by saying they don't want to pay for somebody else's insurance. And in the pre-automated world, that hardcore capitalistic mindset served us well. But we are increasingly not in that world anymore. I've used automation as an example, but this kind of technological explosion is happening in industries and careers all across the board. There is a coming change on a fundamental and massive scale in this world. One that's filled with amazing advancements and technological wonders. But are we gonna be able to change with it? 
Our current economic model is simply not equipped to handle a world where a third of the population can't work because of automation. We're going to have to find a way to divorce our relationship between income and work. Or maybe dissolve our entire monetary paradigm and embrace an economy that isn't based on money. And I know you might be saying that's crazy because the economy has to be based on something, but it's like when I was a kid, I knew about the Great Depression and I read about the Great Depression and I always assumed that all that money in the United States went somewhere else. And then I found out that the Depression was actually a worldwide phenomenon and that blew my mind. I never could wrap my head around that. Like, where did all that money go? Did it just vanish? And the answer is, yeah, it just vanished. Because money is a made up concept. It's something we just created. It doesn't really exist. So... Maybe we could make up something else. This is not going to be easy. Times of massive change rarely are. Because it's not just about how you keep a roof over your head, it's about who we want to be as a species. And right now, we are a very fractured society with vastly different opinions on that. So this is the part of the video where I'm supposed to say something really optimistic and, and enlightening and say how, you know, we're human beings and we've overcome harder things in the past and we'll overcome this and everything will work out fine because this, that, and the other. But if I were to do that right now, I don't think I would be genuine with you because the fact of the matter is I'm worried. We are dealing with a level of change that our species has never dealt with before. And yes, we may come out to some kind of wonderful utopia on the other side, but in between here and there, things could get bad. I mean, like, as bad as it's ever gotten in history. I get asked from time to time whether or not I think that the threat of climate change will prevent us from ever getting to the singularity, but I have to be honest, I think I'm more afraid of this than I am of climate change. Because the worst effects of climate change are still sort of in the future. It's, we're seeing the effects now, but the worst effects are sometime in the future. This that I'm talking about right here, this is going to be happening in the next couple of decades. I know I'm starting to sound a little bit like a doomsday prepper. I'm not, but I do think this is something that we need to be prepared for. Obviously, I hope I'm wrong, but that's why I wanted to do a video that was real with you guys about the dark side of all this change and advancement and cool stuff that's coming our way. Because we need to be prepared for it, or else we're all going to be in the horse trade. So I know the tone of this was a little bit different for this channel. I apologize, but I don't, I don't want to be unreal with you guys. I want to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm putting myself out there the way I really feel about things. And this, this is not overwhelmingly what's going on in my mind, but it is something that's there, and I wanted to express it. But do you think I'm blowing things out of proportion? You think this will actually be a smoother transition than I'm saying? Please cheer me up in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry that was a bummer. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons on Patreon. My answer files, they help make the show possible. If you would like to do what they do and get access to cool perks and another secret vlog that I have going on, you can go to patreon.com slash anxious with Joe. This video is also brought to you by cankerboy.com. If you get recurring canker sores on a monthly basis or know somebody who does, go to cankerboy.com, find a solution for you, and live life pain free. Now, you know the drill like, share, subscribe, hit that bell to get notifications so you can see when these videos come out. In the meantime, you guys go out and have an eye opening week, and I will see you next time. Love you guys. Take care.